Now for part B, we've got to differentiate with respect to x, cos x all over x squared. And to do this, what we would need to do is use the quotient rule because we've got two functions of x, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. Although I suppose you could bring the x squared up and write it as x to the power minus 2 times cos x but I, and use the product rule, but I certainly wouldn't encourage you to do that. No, it's much easier to use the quotient rule. So, what is the quotient rule? Just as a quick reminder, remember if you've got y equals u over v, where u and v are functions of x, it can be shown that dy by dx, and this is formula is in your formula book, it's equal to the bottom of the fraction, v, multiplied by the differential of the top of the fraction, du dx, minus the top of the fraction, u, times differential of the bottom of the fraction, dv by dx, all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So that's the quotient rule, and that is the rule that uh, I'm going to be using to differentiate cos x over x squared. But before we start, what I'm going to do is say, let y equal this, okay? So that I can say dy dx equals. So let's just say, let y equal cos x over x squared. So to differentiate it, therefore dy by dx equals. Should be able to go straight into it. We know that it's the bottom of the fraction times the differential of the top of the fraction. So the bottom of the fraction is x squared, put that in brackets, now multiply it by the differential of the uh, top of the fraction. Differential of to cos x is going to be minus sine x. The standard result that you should know. Then it is minus the top of the fraction times differential of the bottom of the fraction. So the top of the fraction is cos x, make sure you put that in brackets. Now we multiply it by the differential of the bottom of the fraction. Differential of x squared is 2x. Put that in brackets. And it's all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So if we square x squared, that's going to give us x to the power 4. So we need to tidy this up. The first term would look better as minus x squared sine x, minus x squared sine x. Next term would look better as minus 2x cos x, so minus 2x cos x. And we can release the brackets if we write it like that. All over then x squared, all squared, which is x to the power 4. Now what we could do here is pull out minus x as a common factor, it would certainly reduce the number of negatives we've got. If we pull the minus out and then we have the x outside, then on the top we've just got x sine x, and then we can change that to a plus, and then we've got 2 cos x. And then that's all over x to the power 4. Now we've got a single term on the top, single term on the bottom, made up of common factors. We've got x, which is a common factor. So we can cancel it out. x into x is 1, and x into x to the power 4 is x cubed. So we finally end up with the fraction minus, and then x sine x, we don't need any brackets anymore, plus 2 cos x all over x cubed. Okay, just take care by the way, if you're writing these negatives here, don't let this minus go beyond this line here, this division line, otherwise it's going to alter the meaning. Quite a common mistake I often see when people write down statements like this, they have that minus just slightly leaking over the edge. Try and avoid that. Okay, so anyway, that's my version of the answer and I hope that gives you some idea then how to do that question.